Uh, let's get back to uh, potential treatments for the virus. Uh, and for that, we're joined right now by Distributed Bio CEO Jake Glanville, the company, amongst many others, uh, trying to develop a COVID-19 antibody treatment and partnering with a number of important institutions to do that. Uh, Mr. Glanville, thanks for joining us this morning. Why don't you just start off by telling us what your efforts are centered on right now and whether you're making any progress. Great. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, my company, Distributed Bio, is focusing on creating an antibody therapeutic. So this is a medicine you'd inject into a patient, and within about 20 minutes, those antibodies would be able to neutralize the virus and provide protection. It lasts about eight weeks, so this could also be administered to healthcare professionals uh, to provide them some protection while they're in a high-risk workspace. We are anticipating finishing the engineering of our antibody on the week of April 13th or even the week of April 6th, at which point that goes to the U.S. military, U.S. AMRID, and they're going to be evaluating the potency on live virus. Well, uh, now, forgive my ignorance here. What is the difference between this and a vaccine, or are we talking about the same thing? You said only eight weeks, so that would imply it's not obviously a lifetime uh, uh, immunization against the virus. Yeah, so they're two pretty different uh, medicines. They're both important, but here's the difference. With a vaccine, I would give it to you, and then your body would respond to the pieces of the virus in the vaccine, and after six or seven weeks, your body would produce antibodies to protect you. Whereas with what I'm doing, I'm skipping the middleman there. I'm just giving you the antibody directly, so it works right away. It doesn't last for years like a vaccine does, but it works immediately. And the critical difference here is that vaccines, because they take many weeks to work, you can't give them to patients, which means when you run human, human studies, you have to give them to a very large number of healthy people, and you have to watch them for a very long time. That's why they're estimating it's going to take 12 to 18 months for the vaccines to become available. Right. Where this, we really just need to do one phase one slash two human study. And we can do it over the summer on about 600 subjects. And as long as it works, that's enough for us to be able to release it for compassionate use by September. Well, look, obviously watch that. Uh, I know you worked on Ebola. You're a pandemic expert. I'm just curious if you think as a country we're doing enough to fight this and what you think about the testing right now. Sure. So we were definitely caught uh, a little flat-footed in the first few months of the outbreak. Um, China did a great job of buying the world some time, and you know we took a while to adapt, as did many other countries. At this point, I am glad that we are applying very strict social distancing measures. So here in California, we have some of the strictest. It seems scarier, but the truth is we are safer. Uh, what we are going to see over the next month, unfortunately, is a continued growth in cases, just because that's, that's all the cases that are already out there catching up to us. So th this month is going to be tough. The good news is, Social distancing measures is going to slow the cases, similar to what we saw in China. The bad news is China is going to have to start sending people back to work. And we're going to run into that same experience. Either you tell everyone to go home and you slow the virus, or you tell everyone to go back to work to fix the economy, in which case there's, there's more growth of infections. And I think that's what we're going to see for the rest of the year. Dr. Glanville, have you seen any mutations in this coronavirus like we do see in the seasonal flu? So other groups are looking at that, and we definitely see an accumulation of mutations happening across all the virus around the world. Scientists are doing a really good job of comparing notes on this. Uh, the question really becomes, um, is there enough mutation that you could become infected, and then by the next season, if this stays around, um, will you be reinfected by a new mutant version like happens with flu? And we just don't know that yet. Um Mr. Glanville, how many other companies are you aware of that are working on a similar antibody kind of a treatment? And what distinguishes your company in terms of your ability perhaps to get there before others? Sure. So there's, uh, I'd say, four or five other companies that I'm aware of that are working on this. Uh, what we're doing that's pretty different is most of these companies are starting from scratch. They're either taking blood from uh, COVID-19 recovered patients or they're immunizing uh, mice and recovering the antibodies there. What we're doing that's different is we went back to anti-SARS antibodies from 2002. So the SARS virus is a cousin of the new COVID-19 causing virus. And so we took these antibodies that are uh, great neutralizers against SARS. So if SARS ever came back, those would be great drugs. And we're using a uh, technology in our laboratory to create hundreds of millions of mutations on those antibodies to evolve them to catch up to the new COVID-19. And the, the advantage of that is that suddenly we're piggybacking on years of research on those old anti-SARS antibodies to bring them uh, to become the, a, a strong therapy for its COVID-19. And in our estimation, this means we're going to have the first antibody that's actually optimized towards the target compared to other groups who are just trying to find an antibody in the first place.